we just looked at some examples of a so we looked at a regression tree a very simple regression tree and we looked at an example of a classification tree and next we're going to talk about how one would grow such a tree so growing a tree in a good way preferably get, get a tree which has good performance so before I get into this let me just briefly mention I uh, I only handled I only described examples in the case where the features of X here were real valued so each coordinate was real valued but this algorithm can be extended in a very uh, still it's still efficient and extended in a very natural way to the case when the features are say integer valued or even more generally if they're not even ordered but they're say just categorical just some some from some finite set so how do you construct one of these things well it turns out that there's not a a, a way to get the optimal tree so there, there's some optimal tree of the types that I described above for minimizing the, the, the training error but we can what we can do is use what is called a greedy algorithm this is what people usually do because finding the global optimum is uh, well at least nobody's come up with an efficient way to do it so what's the the greedy algorithm so a greedy algorithm in general is one where at each step you choose the optimal decision and at the end you get something which may not be up you know globally optimal but it's it might be might be reasonable so I'm going to talk about this in the case of regression. So let's think about, let's call this RD, just some abstract, make a little more space there. So this is just some abstract cube here, some multi high dimensional cube. And maybe this is the first coordinate, XI1, I'll denote XI1. Maybe this is XI2 and maybe this is xi3 and there's more dimensions but unfortunately I can't draw them so we've got this this high dimensional space here and what our greedy algorithm is going to do is it's going to find so at the first step so we have to construct this binary tree right so at the first step it's going to choose the coordinate and the split that minimizes the error. So let me make that a little more precise. So we've got, so let's define this, the following quantity. So we've got a sum, so we've got, remember we had in the case of regression, we had this error function. So we have, so let me write it this way. So we've got y, we've got the, the min over all y's, y minus yi, summing, oh, squared. This is our loss, and where I'm going to make this sum over i's such that xi is greater than s for some number s. Oh, I should say xi, let's make it xij is greater than s because our x's, right, our x's are these points. xi is some point xi1, xi2 up to xid. So we're going to sum over those i's for which xij, the jth coordinate, is greater than s. And we also have this part. So this is going to be the, the greater than part. xij greater or equal to s. y minus yi squared. So this this minimum, remember this this is the 
the same thing here. We, we wanted to get the y, but the quantity is the same thing we were, we were minimizing over this region. So here, we're choosing the, the value y, which minimizes this, this error over the region. So if, for example, if we had, uh, so if s, so if j was 1, and s was whatever this this quantity is here then we would split along here and we would get this region where it's less or equal to, oh that should be oh this one should be less or equal to so we'd have the region where it's less or equal to all this stuff over here and we would choose the y to minimize our error in this part for this one and then for this one, we would choose the y to minimize our error on this other part. And so we will choose for the first split, split, choose j and s. Let me make some room here. to minimize this quantity. Right? So a given any given j and s, for any given j and s, this quantity is well defined. And we can we can find so we can do this efficiently because well there's only finitely many there's only j only goes from 1 to d and for each j there's only, well, there, there's of course infinitely many possible real numbers s that we could split this dimension along, but since we only have finitely many data points, right, we only have, you know, there's only finitely many points in our data set, it turns out that we only need to consider finitely many splits s. So that's the first step, the first split. We choose this S and J, and maybe say it's this one, say we get this one. Now, so that determines our first node. Now let's say we're going to look at this one. So now we have this region over here, say maybe, maybe it's this region on this side. And let's call that region R. So for the next split, or say, so for split, splitting region R, we're going to do just the same thing, essentially the same thing. So we'll choose J and S to minimize minimize oh, the min over all y's and now we're only going to sum over i's such that both xij is greater than s and xi is in r because we're only considering now the subset of points that are in this region. So we're restricting our attention to this region. So we, so we started out with all the data, we split it, and now this one's just looking at R. When we split that, maybe we split it here something like this, right? So this was our, our first split was like along this plane here. Now maybe this is our second split. So here, you know, this would be like, that was our original S and then this was like, you know, the next S, maybe you call it SR or something like that, the split R. And then continuing, so now that gives us our split for this node and we can continue. Maybe we need to do this one. 
So for this one, we would again get a new region. Maybe we call this one, I don't know, R prime or something. This region above, you know, to the to the, so it's to the right of S and it's above S R. And we just continue doing this same procedure here. So this we recurse on this step. So we split. So we would split R prime and we would take this to be R prime. So this gives us a way to construct this tree. We just keep doing it. And as I've described, this procedure would just keep going on uh, in infinitely. So how do we stop? When do we stop? Well, we could stop. So one way to stop is we could stop when you know there's only one point x in r so we if we get to some r that has only one point we don't split or another thing which probably is a little better strategy is to only consider splits so here we were considering arbitrary splits s but we could consider, so option A would be only consider splits resulting in regions, regions with greater or equal to some parameter, some number of say, I don't know, five points per region. So we could do this. And so you would modify this, this, these splitting steps to, so that you would make sure that whenever you split, you always end up with at least five points in each, in each region. Or, you know, replace this by any, any number m, some minimum number. This some, so this would be some parameter that you would choose. So typically what people do is follow this type of greedy procedure to grow a regression tree and then, well typically what then people do is they they use a what's called a pruning strategy to reduce the, to, to prune the tree back because it, for statistical reasons, which we'll talk about later, it, it turns out that that gives you better performance. But what we're going to do instead is take the random forests approach, and we will talk about a different way to handle the, the problem that, that, that you end up with by growing a, a full tree, you know, even if you use this sort of this parameter to, to limit things. So, so we'll use, use the randomization techniques of bootstrap aggregation and random subspaces to get better performance. So this is how you grow a regression tree.